Hey, Mark. It is good to see you. Come in. Sit down. Do you want some coffee or tea? Hi, Sarah. Coffee would be great, thank you. Black, please. No sugar for me today. No sugar? That is new. You usually love sugar in your coffee. Are you on a diet? Not exactly a diet, but I am trying to be healthier this month. To be honest, I feel a bit frustrated with myself lately. Oh, no. Why? You sound really down. What is happening? It's just my daily routine. It is a mess. I tell myself every morning, today will be different. Today I will exercise. I will eat healthy food. I will focus on my work. But then the day finishes and I realize I did none of those things. I just feel lazy and stuck. Mark, listen to me carefully. You are absolutely not lazy. It sure feels like laziness. Why can't I just do what I want to do? Because it is not about willpower. It is about biology. It's about how your brain is built. Actually, I just listened to a fascinating podcast about this exact topic. It changed how I see everything. Really? A podcast about habits? Did it explain why I eat cookies when I don't even want them? Yes, it explained exactly that. It was all about the science of habits. Did you know that about 45% of everything you do every single day is not a conscious choice? 45%? Really? That is almost half of my life. Exactly. Almost half your day is on autopilot. You were just repeating things you did yesterday and the day before without thinking. Autopilot. That makes sense. I don't think about brushing my teeth or how to drive to work. I just do it. Right. And that is actually a good thing. Your brain is trying to help you. It wants to save energy. Imagine if you had to think really hard every time you tied your shoes. You would be exhausted by 9 a.m. That is true. So the brain makes things automatic to save energy. Yes. When you learn something new, like a new job or a difficult recipe, your brain works very hard. It uses a part called the prefrontal cortex. That's the thinking area. It uses a lot of energy. Okay, I follow you. But your brain doesn't like using so much energy. So when you repeat an action many times, the brain says, okay, I know this now. I will move this task to the easy part of the brain. It moves to an area called the basal ganglia. That is the autopilot center. So my bad habits, like checking my phone every five minutes, are stuck in that autopilot center? Yes. It's like your brain built a super fast highway for that action. It is very easy to drive on that highway. Trying to stop that habit is like trying to break the concrete highway with just a small hammer. It is really hard work. Wow. That actually makes me feel a little better. It's not just me being weak. It's my brain being efficient. Exactly. And there is more. The podcast talked about something called a habit loop. A loop? Like a circle? Yes. Every habit, good or bad, has three parts in a circle. If you understand the parts, you can break the circle. Okay, tell me the parts. I need to know this. The first part is the cue. Cue? C-U-E? What does that mean? It means a trigger or a signal. It is the thing that tells your brain, okay, time to start the habit now. Like a starting gun in a race? Perfect example. Yes. The second part is the routine. This is the actual behavior. It's the thing you do, like eating the cookie or checking Facebook. And the third part? The third part is the reward. This is super important. It is the good feeling you get after you do the routine. It tells your brain, hey, that was nice. Let's do it again next time.
Can we try to find the loop for one of my bad habits? Let's do it. Which habit bothers you the most right now? The afternoon sugar crash. Every day at 3 p.m. while I am working, I go to the kitchen and eat three or four cookies. I want to stop, but I can't. Okay, let's be detectives. We know the routine, eating cookies. What is the reward? How do you feel after you eat them? Hmm, well, they taste good, obviously, but also I feel a bit relaxed. I get a break from my difficult work for five minutes. Aha, so the reward might not just be the sugar. The reward is also the break and the relief from stress. I think you're right. I usually feel overwhelmed when I go to get them. Okay, so what is the cue? What happens right before 3 p.m.? I usually finish my main meetings and I look at my long to-do list for the rest of the day. I feel tired and a bit bored. There it is. The cue is that feeling of tiredness and boredom at a specific time of day. So the loop is, I feel tired at 3 p.m., cue, I eat cookies, routine, I feel relief and get a break, reward. Exactly. And here is the secret mark. This is the golden rule of changing habits. You cannot just delete a habit. If you just say, I will not eat cookies, you will fail. Why? I thought I just needed to be stronger. Because your brain still wants that reward. It still wants the relief at 3 p.m. If you just remove the cookies, you have nothing to give you that relief. You will feel miserable and eventually you will go back to the cookies. That is exactly what happens. I stop for two days, I feel terrible, and then I eat a whole bag of cookies on day three. See? The golden rule says, keep the cue, keep the reward, but change the routine. How do I do that? You need a different routine that gives you the same reward, a break, and some relief. What else could you do at 3 p.m.? Hmm. I could just stand up and walk around for five minutes. That is a great idea. A short walk gives you a break from your desk and moving your body wakes you up. It might give you the same relief as the cookies. Or maybe I could have a cup of nice herbal tea. It still tastes good, but no sugar. Yes. Try different things. Experiment. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., when you feel that cue, Immediately stand up and go for a walk instead of going to the cookie jar. See if you feel the same satisfaction. I will try that. It feels more possible than just stopping. It is much more possible. You are working with your brain, not against it. The podcast mentioned something else interesting, dopamine. I always thought dopamine was the reward after you do something good. Oh, this is fascinating. New research shows that dopamine actually spikes before you do the habit. Before? Yes. It is the chemical of anticipation or craving. Your brain remembers the reward from last time. So when it sees the cue, it releases dopamine immediately to make you want to do the routine. It pushes you to act. That explains why the urge is so strong. My brain is chemically pushing me toward the cookies before I even stand up. Exactly. It's like your brain is yelling, go get the reward, go now. Knowing this makes me feel less guilty. It's biology. But Sarah, sometimes I don't even know what starts my bad habits. You help me find the 3 p.m. cue, but what about others? Cues can be tricky. The podcast said there are usually five main types of cues. If you know them, you can find them easier. What are the five types? The first is location, where you are. Do you always eat junk food when you sit on your specific comfortable sofa? Yes, as soon as I sit on that sofa, I want potato chips. 
that's a location cue. The second is time, like your 3 p.m. cookie monster. Okay, that is clear. The third is emotional state, how you feel. Are you bored, stressed, sad, happy? Boredom is a big one for me. When I'm bored, I check my phone instantly. Me too. The fourth type is other people. Other people? Yes. Do you have friends who you always smoke with or friends you always eat fast food with? Oh, definitely. When I'm with my friend Dave, we always eat burgers. Always. Dave is a walking cue for you. And the fifth type is preceding action. This means something you just did. For example, when I finish washing the dishes, I immediately turn on the TV. Wow, I never realized there were so many different triggers. I need to pay more attention to why I'm doing things. Awareness is the first step. You cannot change what you don't notice. Okay, I have a plan for changing old habits. But what about starting new ones? I really want to start meditating, but I always forget to do it. Ah, for new habits, there is an amazing technique called habit stacking. Habit stacking? Like stacking boxes on top of each other? Yes, exactly like that. Think about your day. You already have many strong habits that you never forget. Like brushing my teeth, taking a shower, making coffee. Perfect. Those are your anchor habits. They're solid like a rock. You can build a new, small habit on top of them. How does that work? You use a special sentence. I will do new habit after I do current habit. Can you give me an example for meditation? Sure. You said you always make coffee in the morning, so your stack could be, after I pour my cup of coffee, I will meditate for one minute. Just one minute? That seems too small. It must be small. If you say, I will meditate for 30 minutes, your brain will say, no way. That is too hard, and you will not do it. But one minute? That is easy. You cannot say no to one minute. That is true. I can definitely do one minute. The goal at the beginning is just consistency. You want to create that new highway in your brain. Once the habit is solid, you can increase the time to five minutes, then 10 minutes. I see. I always try to do too much too soon. I try to run five miles on my first day, and then I'm too tired to run again for a month. Classic mistake. We all do it. We get excited and motivated, but motivation doesn't last. Habits last. Start ridiculously small. Ridiculously small. I like that. Another cool idea they talked about is keystone habits. What is a keystone? A keystone is the most important stone in a bridge. If you remove it, the bridge falls. In habits, it means one key habit that changes everything else in your life. Does one habit really have that much power? Yes. For many people, it is exercise. When they start exercising just a little bit, strange things happen. They naturally start eating better because they don't want to ruin their workout. They sleep better because they are tired physically. They feel more confident at work. It's like a domino effect. You push one and they all fall. Exactly. You don't have to change 20 things in your life. Just find one keystone habit and focus on that. The rest will often follow naturally. I think for me, that keystone habit might be sleeping earlier. When I sleep well, I eat better and I work better. When I'm tired, I eat sugar and I procrastinate. That is a brilliant insight, Mark. Sleep is a massive keystone habit for almost everyone. So instead of worrying about diet and work, maybe just focus 100% on getting to bed at 10.30 p.m. every night. That feels so much simpler. I can focus on one thing. There is one more thing I want to tell you from the podcast. It is about being flexible. They called it behavioral leeway. 
Leeway means flexibility, right? Yes. Being too rigid or strict can actually kill a good habit. How? Isn't it good to be strict? Not always. Imagine your goal is, I will run three miles every morning at 6 a.m. in the park. Okay. Sounds like a good goal. But what happens on a day when it's raining heavily? Or what if you woke up late and only have 20 minutes? Usually I would just skip it and then I would feel like a failure. Exactly. The strict rule made you fail. Behavioral leeway means you have flexible options. Your goal shouldn't be run three miles. Your goal should be exercise for 20 minutes. Ah, I see. So if it's sunny, I run. If it's raining, I do yoga in my living room. Yes, both count as success. You keep the habit alive no matter what happens in your day. You become resilient. That is really helpful. I'm very hard on myself when I miss a day. Be kind to yourself. Building habits is a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, and if you really need extra help, use accountability. You mean like telling a friend? Yes, but make it stronger. The podcast mentioned betting money. Ooh, that is scary. It works. Tell me, Sarah, if I don't exercise three times this week, I will pay you $50. $50? Wow. I would definitely exercise. I hate losing money. See? It is called a commitment device. You make it painful to fail. Sometimes we need that little extra push when our willpower is low. You know, Sarah, this conversation has been amazing. I felt so hopeless when I arrived, but now I feel like I have a real toolkit. I am so glad, Mark. It's just science. You're not broken. You just needed the instruction manual for your brain. So let me recap to make sure I understood everything. Good idea. First, I am not lazy. My brain is just trying to save energy on autopilot. Correct. Second, every habit is a loop. Cue, routine, reward. To change a bad habit, I must keep the cue and reward the same, but swap the routine. Perfect. For new habits, I should use habit stacking. I anchor the new tiny habit to an old strong habit, like meditating after my coffee. Yes, start ridiculously small. And finally, I need to be flexible so I don't give up when things get busy or it rains. You got it all. You are an A-plus student. Thanks, Sarah. I'm actually excited to try this tomorrow. I'm going to move my cookie jar into a difficult cupboard right now so I don't see the visual cue. Fantastic first step. Changing your environment is a superpower. Let me know how it goes, okay? I will. Thanks for the coffee and the therapy session. Anytime, Mark. You've got this. Great work today. Keep going. Every lesson helps you improve your English. I'm excited to see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fun lessons. Keep learning and see you again soon.